Um, it is an honor and a privilege to be here with you, Dina. Thank you. Um, meeting you has definitely changed my life um, for oh. the better, and I'm I'm very grateful for that. Um, I love what you're doing. I love the platform. I'm a fan of your social media, and I'm, I, I think you're doing really important work around many things, right? I mean, around domestic abuse, divorce, life changes, and even touching on stories of recovery. It's but thank you, Dana. I, uh, I think you do an amazing job from what I've seen, and I've watched a few of your podcasts, and I've done a lot of podcasts and that, and you let people, it just, people just talk it flows out of them hey welcome back to the show this is the life changes channel podcast and i'm your host dina court and today i bring a special guest who is going to lead us through uh, a little mini workshop and you get to participate she presented at one of our online divorce support groups and she's going to talk about trauma release. She also is very um, passionate about empowering people, women beyond their traumas and their life changes and things that they've experienced. She's also a personal trainer, so she can help you in all areas of your life. And I really encourage you to work through this with us if you want to just listen if you're out driving or walking or in the shower or wherever you happen to be listening listen through but go back and take your time and go through this and and really you know dig in take those steps and you might be surprised what you uncover and how you will feel better so let's get into the conversation um i did I, you know there were some problems i had some gremlins some tech issues but i think i think It'll be all fine. You will. It'll be good. It's just the real world that just happens. Okay, let's meet Ramona and go on this journey of discovery and empowerment. You're going to really enjoy this. Wonderful. Thank yeah. you. So I'm so happy to see you here and I appreciate the opportunity to just sit with you today. Um, as I was saying to Dina, this isn't a big old presentation where I spew a bunch of information at you. That's, that's not, I don't think, what you need right now. This isn't a business conference. So um, what I'm hoping this will do for you is help you to see some things from a little different angle and help you to maybe take a breath and consider what your next steps might be. Because you're not going to walk away from here and go, oh, snap, I'm going to fix my life, right? It's, it's a freaking, it's an hour with me. So I'm here to support you and provide value. Okay, so um, the title of this discussion is Empowerment and Three Stages and Building Your, your Life on a Foundation of Self-Worth, Working from the Inside Out. So that's my values in the work that I do. Um, so what I'd love to invite you to do is take a moment to get out of your head, okay? Um, we have enough of this squirrel brain going on. And I invite you, I mean, I can't see any anyways, but if you wanna just put your hand on your heart or just, just close your eyes for a sec, take a nice breath in and just a nice long breath out and then oh, let your shoulders drop out of your ears, okay? So <laughs> nice breath in, expand your belly and lower rib cage. Let those shoulders down. And what I'd love you to, to think about here is just notice what does my body need? What is my body telling me I need? Okay, and just sit with that. That's the intention here. Um, now, when we talk about being empowered and moving forward and living your life, best life and blah, blah. Yeah, that sounds really nice, right? But um, I'm not here to give you platitudes and, and fluff. And this is just real talk from my experiences as a human and as a coach. Uh, because I've had the honor of facilitating uh, many transformations with my clients. And I also recognize that you will all each be at your own spot in your journey, not only from this perspective of divorce, but your well-being will be different for each of you. Um, so I'm honored to meet you where you're at. Um, quite often clients come to me um, they're not feeling resilient. So if I get a referral from a divorce mediator or someone else who's 
sending a client my way. Um, at that point, your, your nervous system is here, right? You're not like, well, you know, I could be better. No, you're not feeling resilient usually by this point. So let's just recognize, you know, this is a lot for your nervous system, whether you're in the middle of it, you're contemplating it, or it was 25 years ago, it doesn't matter, right? Um, you might've been told how strong you are and how you're so resilient, but you know what, that gets old. You're sick of being strong. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you feel broken or frazzled or depleted or angry or just sad, I'm here for that, okay? Um, your emotions are just giving you a message. But there's more to you than this story. So the story isn't you, but we need to honor your experience so that you can move forward in the future without dragging a bunch of heavy baggage behind with you. It doesn't need to come with you to the next part of your life. So who am I to talk to you about this? Well, I started out as in natural health and wellness, and I became certified as a fitness professional over the last eight years. So I help women to get empowered in their bodies. And I really dig that. Um, I think there's a piece of you that comes alive when you get strong in your body. Um, but more recently, I wanted to help women with their emotions. And when I became more aware of what trauma actually is, which is at the, at the simplest level, trauma is a bodily response to a perceived threat that has an element of feeling inescapable. And we are a diverse and complex humans. Trauma is not always worst case scenario. Trauma is not always abuse or a catastrophic event. Yes, I help people with those things, but we are complex humans. And what feels like a threat to us could be social, financial, uh, physical, of course, um, mentally. Uh, there's, there's so many ways that we can experience a threat. Um, and sometimes it's those, that slow drip mm -hmm. that actually really does it. Not the big thing, it's the slow drip. <laughs> if you can give me a, like a little, yeah, I, I hear you. If, you, if, this, if you're <laughs> seeing this or witnessing that or feeling it, uh, I'm happy to hear your little comments. Um, so when I became certified as a gentle trauma release practitioner, uh, the reason I chose this is part of that, that part of me that wants to solve a problem just, just is so gratified by solving a problem. Uh, and then there's that earthy side of me that I have this healing quality. I want to heal. I want to help. Uh, I love to sit with people in that space. Um, but when I learned that there was a way to effectively heal trauma in a way that's consistent, gentle, lasting, and uh, effective, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, sign me up, right? Um, right okay. So I'm speaking a lot from that perspective of understanding what trauma is and how it shows up. And um, what you can think about is, is divorce is, is like a catalyst, right? Uh, there may be good that comes of it, but I'm not about putting silver linings on hard things at that moment. Um, you may have trauma in your system from childhood and from what went on during the relationship, right? It might've been the slow drip or worse. Um, but you were, it was tolerable. You were functioning to a point, but then you get to the point of the complete and utter upheaval of divorce. Um, and that's when your resilience thresholds can be surpassed. And then this is when, you know, professionals who are supporting their clients through different aspects of, of divorce are saying, mm, she's not doing so good, right? Yeah. So we need to get you through these hard things and, and still be okay. We need to come on the other side of it and still be more than okay. Okay. Um, so that's where I'm speaking from. And when we talk about the word empowered, you might think, oh, what everyone's empowered now. What's empowered, right? Everybody's talking about empowered. It's the buzzword. It's always trauma. Well, empowered from one perspective means agency and choice. So when you're empowered, you have agency in how you show up. You have agency in how you respond. You see more options because trauma is limiting it's this or that and you're here and you're constricted and small and you're not resourceful so empowered means i see my choices uh i'm going to respond to what i have control over and i see my worth 
Okay, so that's one way to look at empowerment. And that's the ultimate goal. Sorry, I have a hair thing going on today. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> um, it has its own agency. It's, it's just, uh, I don't know, it just wants to, <laughs> to be a rebel. So how does trauma show up in the empowerment? Uh, like you are a device, a diverse person, right? We're all different, but um, trauma is limiting. And in the moment, it's protective. Um, trauma is a survival response. You might have hurt by flight, freeze, uh, shut down. Um, but when trauma responses are not resolved, and our society tends to be that way that we don't resolve, uh, it remains in your system and your body keeps the, sore, the score, so to speak. And it doesn't matter if it was 25 years ago or yesterday, it doesn't matter. Your body knows the threat exists primitively. So this limits you. It limits how you see your opportunities. It limits how you can manage stress. It limits how you can connect emotionally. It limits how you see your work. So it's all just limiting. So the idea when I work with trauma with clients is to, is to help you um, open back up to your, your real self, your creative, resourceful, resilient self. And this is where you can see more of what's possible for yourself. So the other word that's coming up is transitions. Now, a quick question. Um, did, it, did any of you or all of you or some of you get the, the worksheet that was on the email? Just put it like a little yes for the worksheet if, you, if you've got the worksheet. If not, maybe consider downloading that after and, and revisiting the recording. So I see a thumbs up. Okay, so if you don't see it, soup your message and I'll send it to you. Um, well, you don't need it right this minute. You'll be fine. But there's some wonderful resources there for you. And one of them is a worksheet. The other is a gentle trauma assessment, which is a tool. Okay. So we talked about empowerment and a little bit about what trauma is without being all labeling yourself. Okay. So a transition. Of course, trauma, uh, divorce or separation is a transition. It's kind of forced and it's kind of extreme. Transitions aren't always that big because transitions are a change in your identity. It's who you are, not the external. Sometimes the external happens first and the internal transition happens later. Um, hence, you see midlife crises where women just go crazy, so to speak. Maybe it's menopause, but maybe it's just that none, nothing in their life was authentic anymore and they couldn't stand it, right? That's what happened with my mom and then divorce was part of that, right? Um, but a transition is definitely going to look, going, going to go along with divorce, okay? Um, there's a shift in who you are, who you thought you were, the role you thought you had, the values that you had might be changing, um, the desires that you have might be changing, uh, what you identify with is no longer meaningful to you, whatever it is. So it's a profound uh, transition. So this is where you need some TLC to get through that. So we're going to talk a little bit about transitions. Okay. Let me know if there's anything you want to ask so far. I'm just going to see if there's something on the chat. Okay. So I, I just mentioned that they hadn't seen the worksheet okay. that we can send that to them. Yeah. We'll send it after. It's okay. This is more just for reflection. I don't want you to feel like you need to take crazy notes right now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so cover, I'm going to kind of follow the worksheet loosely because then, then the flow of the conversation so we're gonna review the impact of trauma on self-worth, self-care and your capacity in every aspect of your life. So the pre-work that you'll find is what is your catalyst? So if your catalyst that's either pushing you towards changes in who you are, um, causing you to reorganize the whole thing, is it divorce separation or is it another significant life change? Um, or was it something else? There can be other transitions that happened before or along with this one. So what I'd ask you to think about is what are you done with, right? Done, right? So um, it's good to identify what you don't want anymore because when I find if you haven't reached a catalyst yet, you're kind of bumping along, it might be kind of meh, right? but you don't have enough pain or you don't have strong enough desire to change anything, right? And whether I connect with people for wanting to change their fitness and how they show up with their body or, or um, 
maybe think about releasing the trauma they've been dragging around for 40 years. If they're like kind of in the middle, like meh, right? But what you get to the point, either I'm done or I want. So think about what are you done with, right? So this can be anything along the lines of I'm done with feeling depleted. I'm done with people pleasing. I'm done with giving my power away. I'm done with neglecting myself. Whatever it is, doesn't matter. It's your own thing. So this is where you can know what are you done with, okay? And you'll know. You don't have to think too hard. You'll know. If you're not done with anything, I'd have to wonder why are you here? <laughs> your life's okay. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, and then what I think is also valuable is to think about what you desire. And sometimes when you've been in survival mode, and even when things aren't really, really bad, but just kind of a lot of apathy. I've had women sit and break down in tears when I asked, what do you want? Because they couldn't articulate. They're just so disconnected, right? So if you're not sure what the actual thing is that you want, it might be, how do you want to feel? How do you want to feel? Right? Do you want to feel at peace? Do you want to feel self-compassion? Do you want to have hope for a bright future? Do you want to enjoy taking care of yourself and like it, right? Whatever, it's yours. So you can think about or write down, what do you want instead? Because it's, it's hard to make changes when you don't know what you want. True. Right, it gets kind of right. frenetic. And then here's step one. We need to restore your resilience and honor your endings. So with transitions, you're at an intersect here of a catalyst, a transition, and trauma. Okay. So I'm not assuming to label anything for you, but I've never once seen anyone go through divorce without trauma. I'm sorry, but no. <laughs> sometimes it's worse. Sometimes it's not as bad. Um, but what I would ask you to consider is honoring the endings because all transitions begin with an ending, right? Even at, let's say you're going to, you're getting married. Okay, you're getting married. There's an ending of the single version of you. And sometimes that's hard too. And our society isn't good at honoring that. So what part of you is ending? Okay, so if I'm speaking from the perspective of the women I've worked with, well, who I thought I was, was is ending. Um, the life I thought I had is ending. The business we shared is ending. Uh, I'm now a single mother. And that just has so much stigma attached to it. Um, the, the relationship I thought I had is ending. The future. There's so much you can name here, but you'll know, right? Sometimes you got to sit with it because you're like, I don't know everything, right? And you're just kind of shell shocked. So we're honoring that a part of you is ending, and just speak the truth. And the next thing about resilience is, well, do you have trauma symptoms? I mean. We've all been through trauma to some extent, but you're going to have a resilience threshold and some of you will be more sensitive. And okay, I'm jumping in here. I'm gonna see what you think so far. And I hope that what you've heard has you intrigued to dig deeper and to work on a little self-discovery. Now we have other ways that you can also get support and encouragement and information around whatever type of life change you are in the middle of, whether it's divorce, whether it's something that you're contemplating, uh, it might be retirement, it might be uh, a move or a different career, some education. We have resources around all those types of life changes. So please go back and listen to the other podcast episodes. Check out our online digital magazines. They're all free to access. Sign up for our newsletter so that every month you will get something in your mailbox to tell you about um, what is out there for help because you aren't alone. You don't have to get through this all by yourself. I'm here to connect you with the people who can help you, empower you, give you those pieces of information to get you unstuck from wherever you might be. We also have online support groups. So every two weeks, we feature experts who can answer your questions. You get to meet them, talk to them, and bring those questions. Even if the expert isn't there at that time to answer your questions, I bet you we can connect you with someone who does. So be sure and check those out. All the links for everything are in our show notes as well. There's also a blog, check out the website, our YouTube channel. You can see all of these interviews as videos on the YouTube channel as well. Connect with us on social media, reach out, let us know where we can help you. And 
yeah, I'm excited for what is possible in your life. You aren't alone. There's hope. Now let's get back to this little mini workshop with Ramona. Still continuing on. So we're just talking about the uh, now going on to trauma symptoms. So um, as a society as a whole, we tend to be grossly underinformed about what trauma symptoms are. Uh, the other factors, but if it's something that emerged or intensified suddenly, that's a pretty good sign. Um, or you might have like so many of them, you're literally lighting up the sheet and you're like, okay, yeah, something's going on. So um, the gentle trauma assessment is for you. Download it, check it off, sit with it, and then connect me for a conversation. Um, so if the trauma symptoms are particularly bothersome or you have a lot of them, uh, this is a great time to consider. Maybe I should think about releasing some trauma. Um, I've yet to see anyone go and just release their trauma. Um, I have my own trauma coach and I have trauma coaches that I work with. So I don't expect the average typical person to go and just release trauma. I'll give you some tips about how you can start. Okay. Um, so once you've established, do you have significant trauma symptoms? So it, for example, if I think of the clients that have been referred to me that are really not resilient and they're having a very hard time. Uh, it might be that you're incredibly triggered by conversations with your ex or whatever situations you're navigating. Uh, it might be the, the, the new significant other, something happened with your children, whatever. If you're incredibly triggered, um, can't sleep, you're numb, uh, crying, just random outbursts of crying. There's nothing wrong with crying, but if it just kind of has an element of just a desperate release to let the steam off, it's not like a relieving cry. Um, those are very typical for the clients that I've connected with at the early stages of coaching who are just not resilient. Like they've just reached the end of their resilience. Okay. So um, you'll find this a wonderful tool, the gentle trauma assessment, and this will help you do yourself what's happening with my body. Basically it covers it all. Okay. Um, this is something that is very valuable to address because Trauma does not resolve by time. The passage of time does not resolve trauma in any way, shape or form. So you learn to suppress it, you learn to dissociate from it, you learn to sidestep it and bypass it, but you'll have a, li a life situation come up and oh, there it is, okay? It's not resolved. Um, so this is why working in a process to release it can help you to actually like take the weight off your shoulders, like, oh, I feel like a, light, a weight has been off here. Like I'm, oh, I'm so sleepy. Oh, I don't have, you know, it's like when your body knows the threat is resolved, your brain changes. You are, you're, you have cognitive shifts and you see things differently because your body knows the threat is resolved. Okay. So you can, uh, on the worksheet, just take note if you did the, gentle trauma assessment, what were your most bothersome symptoms? Okay. Are you in survival mode? Okay, so a couple of examples is that you're, you space out and the whole day goes by and you don't even remember it hardly. Like you're, you're just like checked out, spaced out, numb, detached, or swinging back and forth between go, 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 and shut down. So if you're like the energizer bunny and then shut down, that's a pretty good sign that you're in survival mode and you can't do more than just the basic functions, okay? You might even see, seem high functioning, like doing a great job at your work and you're showing up, but you're not connected to your body. So um, you can think about, am I in survival mode right now? So this is where we want to address the nervous system and the emotions so that you can move forward without trying to push and force or bypass. Now here's something you can begin immediately. And this is gentle self-care. Now, I have put in the worksheet that safe relationships and safe activities, environments and routines that ground you, nurture you and support you and, and soothe you are great. And you'll decide that. So if your nervous system is really dysregulated, going and meditating might feel really gross. So don't force yourself to meditate, okay? It might, your body might be saying, I'm not ready to feel that yet. So no, right? So uh, it might be being in nature. It might be animals. It might be people that you feel safe with that can hold space for you to just feel how you feel and, and you don't feel 
uncomfortable with them in some way. Cause you know, some people kind of drain the life out of you. You're going to have to limit that. Um, you, you may not be able to go and pound the gym, right? This isn't the time to train for a marathon if you're in survival mode, but maybe you can do some gentle movement. Okay. So gentle is the key. Uh, feeling safe is the foundation of healing trauma. So what makes you feel safe? Safe human connection. So if you look at Tina's face right now, does she look like that? Relax, back, welcome to the depression, welcome to the body level. That tells your autonomic nervous system, I'm safe with you. Okay, so as mammals, our first go to is safe people. Number one, protection. So doesn't mean you need to go and socialize, that might be a bit exhausting, but safe people are super valuable. And if it's not people, maybe it's a horse or a dog or a cat, right? Pet some furry snouts or something. <laughs> Um, so safety and gentleness. And if you need extra sleep, do it, right? Your nervous system is healing. Okay, so we've talked about survival mode, gentle self-care, and what is ending for you. Part of healing is being able to name it so you can claim it and grieve it. When your body's good and ready, you'll be able to leave the grieving stage. And it might kind of come and go, that's normal, okay? You don't need to be grieving 24-7. You can do fun things. You can do relaxing things. You can have pleasure. And then you can also grieve. They can all exist. Okay. Um, but when you name it, your brain goes, oh, yeah. Okay. I get it. Right. I didn't know why last year I was kind of like all edgy and super grouchy and it's miserable. I'm like, my son's graduating. Oh, my baby's graduating. And my, bar my heart just went, oh. as soon as I could name it, I just had to name it. Right. Um, acknowledge that all endings, all transitions begin with an ending and grieving inevitably goes along with endings. Even if there's a positive transition, there's typically still some sadness or something to acknowledge here that there's an ending, okay? You can note what is ending for me. Okay, here's step two. Anything anybody wants to add or ask? We'll just see nothing right now. I really love Throw it in there. I'll address it. Yeah. I Pardon? love how you're giving us some really tangible examples that we can relate to and understand that there is grief. And when there's transitions there, it means transition means an end, whether it's positive or negative, whether it's expected or unexpected, there's still going to be an ending that deserves acknowledgement and there could be grief and that we can name it. And that helps us frame it and go, Oh, okay. That's why I feel that just that edgy, uncomfortable, whatever that might be. So I, I, I like that you address that, Ramona, so that we don't just sit in that and, and get more and more uncomfortable not knowing what's going on yeah. and why. Yeah, there's great power in owning it, right? Just name it and own it and allow your emotions to speak to you. Okay, step two is tending to your wounded parts. So... Leading up to this point, something wasn't aligned, right? You didn't get to this point with everything all hunky-dory and everything's fabulous, right? So, and we all have wounded parts, so to speak. And what I mean by that is we have archetypes that too, especially when we're tired, scared, uh, burnt out, uncomfortable, we'll have a default, okay? So in your relationship, you would have had a default, in your work, you have a default. In how you care for your body and your finances, you'll have a default archetype. Sometimes there's multiple, but you'll have a dominant one. And especially if you, during the course of your marriage or relationship, um, were not feeling completely met, you were not feeling 100% authentic in your life, then a disempowered archetype would have been showing up at some point. We want to tend to her because she is the wounded part that's trying to protect you. Okay, so the first one that's typical is the mother or parent energy. Okay, so pre presuming we're all women here, I'll say uh, the mother energy. Okay, if someone's listening that's not a woman, okay, it's a parent, <laughs> just to not exclude anybody. Um, so mother energy is going to go usually one of two ways. There's many sub archetypes, and I'm not talking about being a mom. You can be childless and be in mother energy. You can be five years old. And be in mother energy. So 
The first one would be what was more like my dominant archetype. Um, I was the oldest child of seven, okay, in a religious family and with money struggles. So who was the one that was uh, parentified, okay? So moving into adulthood, she was my dominant archetype most of the time, walls up, rigid, closed off, control freak, my way or the highway, right? And the ruler mother energy, she has good intentions. She wants the best for the people and that she cares about, but her way is the best, okay? So she's like, I'll just do it. I'll just do it, right? She's going to take me and, and, and not receive me, right? She's not connected to her feminine self to receive. She's not connected to her senses, even just enjoying pleasurable things like taking a warm bath or eating an apple or just touch, gentle touch, right? So mother energy could be like the rigid one. She wants structure. She wants control, right? Go, 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 right? The other one that's very typical is more like the martyr, okay? The martyr mother. She's almost been glorified, right? You'll hear a funeral. Oh, she was selfless. Well, who needs to be selfless for Pete's sake, right? So the martyr um, means well, and she keeps herself safe, valuable, and lovable by taking on everybody else's stuff, emotionally, mentally, physically, financially, whatever it is. So she tends to have porous boundaries, overgive and overfunction, fix, rescue, accommodate, and take responsibility. Are you recognizing her? Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> right? We have to love on her because she learned this. She learned this as a way to keep you safe, lovable, worthy, accepted, whatever it is. But she's not in power. She's just a little fragment of you. Um, so those are two common ones, okay, in the mother energy realm. And just, you know, if you're dominantly in mother energy, what's your partner going to be? Hmm. What does it tend to be? The child. Ah. That makes the more, a lot the, of sense. The harder you mother, the harder they child. And it just drives you crazy, right? So they might be weaponized incompetence, so to speak, or um, helpless, irresponsible, selfish, right? So you might have like a teenager child or a younger child, but the more you're in mother energy, the more your partner is in child energy and healing trauma helps you to heal this wounded part of you. So you don't repeat that in other parts of your life or in future relationships. So it all starts out pretty good. And then you start mothering and they start being a child, right? So <laughs> you don't want that. Okay. Um, the other is daughter or child energy. So one way to look at it would be like the good girl who wants to accommodate, who wants to be pleasant, who likes other people to be comfortable, uh, minimizes herself, minimizes her needs, her voice, taking up space, her accomplishments, deflects praise. Um, she probably has passive aggressive people around her. And um, she kind of stuffs down everything, right? So the, the, there's the good girl. Um, the other might be the rebel. So she might be, you're trying to say, come up with a budget. She's like, oh no, we're gonna go rack up the credit cards now. <laughs> right? <laughs> I wanna clean up my diet. Oh no, we're gonna go eat Doritos now, right? So she's like the rebel, right? Any kind of rules or control, she's pushing back hard because she's been through that already and she ain't having it. Right. So anything you try to do now, as much as you want to implement some kind of structure, rules or control in your life, she's like, oh, no, 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 we're not having that. Um, she may even be like a charmer. So if she uses her feminine wiles to get through life, charming the pants off everybody, that's really not your empowered self. Right. She's earning her worth in another way. So anybody recognizing these archetypes <laughs> it might be you or someone, you know, not, it's not fair to you, but. I like to have a little bit of fun with this because I think we have parts of, um, of, of, some of these as well. Right? We're not always the same in every situation. Yeah. 
Yeah, of course. So uh, you'll, you might have certain parts of your life where you show up for mother energy and other parts more child. The woman energy is where you feel empowered. It's where you have agency, sovereignty, and healthy boundaries. So if there's an area in your life where you feel agency, sovereignty, and healthy boundaries, you're probably in your woman energy there. Okay. So we don't want to um, get rid of, judge our, our wounded self and our wounded archetypes. They're showing you an opportunity for healing. They were trying to protect you. And this is what they learned to protect you. So they literally stepped in front of your true self. Your true self is like, I'm not safe. They stepped up and took over. And if you feel uncomfortable, they're right back in there. Right? Um, so healing them and releasing the trauma that caused them to step in front in the first place helps you to start to rebuild. So you can show up differently. You change. But it's you being the real you. If you say, I'm a people pleaser, no, you're not. You learned that. You did not come into life as a people pleaser. You did not come into life as a control freak. None of those things. There's simply learned behaviors to protect you, nothing more. So here's where you can get curious with your worksheet is what are they trying to protect you from? So for example, mother energy might've learned that things will fall apart if I don't take care of it. So if I had clients with a, a mother with substance abuse issues or mental health issues, five-year-old looking after her siblings, five years old. She was in mother energy at five years old, taking on responsibility that wasn't hers, okay? Um, compare your woman energy or your adult energy to the mother or child. And you might just make a note, where in my life do I feel that I'm in my woman energy or adult energy? Where do I feel empowered, like have agency and I'm my real self is showing up and I have boundaries? Where in my life can I receive? Where am I shut down? Where am I controlling and rigid? Where am I flake, super flaky, whiff waffly or porous boundaries? Where do I feel resentful? That's a good sign that the mother energy is showing up hard. Where do, where do I feel powerless? Like my voice isn't being heard. Right? That could be the child. Just get curious. And again, it's with love. Because they are showing up to protect you. That was their only purpose. That's the only reason they're showing up. We want to heal them and bring them back home. Because you and your adult woman energy, you're the one who's empowered to run your life. With the wholeness of you. Not these little fragments. Any thoughts or questions? So you pause for a quick moment. I'd like you to define agency because it. my understanding is that that is choice. So when people don't feel they have agency, say in abusive type situations or this course of control, mm -hmm. they can't pin it down, but they know that if they made a certain choice, so if they use their own personal agency or they made a choice, there could be negative repercussions. So, yeah, so this is a little different okay. uh, because you're being victimized. Right. So we're talking about agent um, areas of your life where you can make empowered choices because you're not being victimized. Um, it doesn't mean you're a victim, that's not a label, uh, but it's, if you're in an abusive relationship, you are being victimized. And what can happen is you just need just enough safety or just enough energy to find your next step. Yes. That might be your empowered choice is, this is so bad I can't do it anymore, or I want this so badly for me and my children, I'm choosing, I'm choosing this thing that terrifies me. Um, because this is worse. So if you're in an abusive situation right now, like this is where you need some other resources to, to just gently help you through, right? Because you're tapped out. And um, that's not what I'm referring to. So thank you for asking that. Because I want you to be clear that um, if you're currently being abused, bullied, victimized, and controlled, you need some outside resources to help you navigate that to the next step so you can start to regroup. And does that help? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, so agency is what is what do I have control over? How can I show up for me? So for example, if you know you're going to leave this um, toxic spouse, you might be, okay, I'm putting money away. I've got some support with putting money aside 
I'm putting a safety plan in place. I've retained legal help. That's an example. That is agency there in action. Perfect. Yes. Thank you, Ramona. And that's okay. empowering in itself. Yes. So it's going to be very much in the context of what do I have control over, mm -hmm. right? And if you're in a, in a threatening situation, the control I have is to fawn, to diffuse. Okay, that's what you're doing right now. But moving forward, like that's, you know, we're talking about the next steps. So a lot of this, you know, the earlier conversation is, is presuming that you're in a, a safe environment and not in an abusive household. Because there are some other steps that need to be addressed before I talk to you about empowerment. Yes, like getting safe. Yeah, the, that's like the foundation. The foundation of healing trauma is being safe. So that's the first thing, right? Um, and this is where your resources and your community within Divorce Magazine is there to help people to find what they need and to help them find what they need, right? So they can start choosing themselves. That's a, a huge step in itself, isn't it, Ramona? Yeah, just... that's monumental. Yeah. Monumental. So usually when, you know, when I've connected with clients who've been in that situation, um, there was a point where it just became something, there was a catalyst for them. They had a catalyst at some point. Uh, I find it was often to do with their children. And that was the catalyst. But usually at some point, there's a catalyst where you're, it was, it's so uh, so frightening or vulnerable to move forward, but staying behind is now the worst, the worst option, right? So you need that little bit of a push from the inside and, and there's a catalyst there too. So if you've been through abuse, um, you know, I'm here for you. It's, it's, I wish that wasn't the world we live in, right? I wish that wasn't the reality for many women. Um, I have worked with women who've been abused and that's part of the work I do. We're not really focusing as much on that today, but just acknowledging that's the reality for many women. Thank you. You guys ready for step three? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How's everybody feeling? Just give me a little wave or nod if this is if you're fine, if you're enjoying this or you're finding this reflective or supportive. I'd love to hear. Thank you. <laughs> Good. <laughs> That's the point. Okay, so step three is building your village. I like to use this term, build a village. They say it takes a village to, to raise a child. It takes a village to empower a woman to crawl out of a hole, okay? You can't do this alone. You might have felt like you were doing this alone at some point, but you don't need to anymore. There's people that want to help. And you building your village is building the supports that you should have had in the first place but you, you, can, you can start now, okay? So you need a village. And create this vision of the person or the woman that you want to become, even if she seems so far away right now. I don't care, I don't care. Remember a, a time in your life when you felt really peaceful, happy, joyous, laughing, silly, playful, safe. Remember that time, because that part of you still exists. She hasn't gone anywhere. So, what you can consider is what no longer aligns with the version of me that I'm moving towards. So when I think about, for example, my mother, she initiated the divorce after almost 40 years of marriage on the outside. Oh, 40 years of marriage. I'm like, yeah, I know this is coming. Right. So um, she left behind many, many things that were no longer her. I think that's why the marriage was intolerable. Part of it was religion in the community. And the husband, my dad. Um, she left everything because it was all pigeonholing her into something she wasn't. So she just left it all. I think people thought she lost her freaking mind. I knew why. Um, I'm the oldest child, right? So I'm like her confidant. But uh, even then it was like she kind of lost it. <laughs> but just think about what do I, what no longer aligns with me? This can be anything. So, for example, what makes me feel drained, irritated, resentful, stuck? That's a good place to start. And then we want to think about what you want to build and create. What do I need more of in my life? And if you're not sure exactly what that is, how do you want to feel? Do I want to feel more loving? Do I want to feel more lovable? 
They want to feel more energized, engaged, supported, worthy. Bring that fresh energy of what you want to move towards, even if you're slogging through the muck right now. And then what do I need less of in order to release, to feel lighter and more free and more able to experience joy and contentment? So you may have already noticed that as you go through a, gen a transition, not everything's going with you. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Not every person, not every relationship, not every hobby. Uh, there's going to be many things that just don't align with where you're going. It's okay. You can grieve that while still choosing yourself. It's okay. So notice what you need less of. It's taking your energy. It's detracting from what you want. Okay. And notice what came up in your gentle trauma assessment. What were your most bothersome symptoms? Usually when I work with a client, about six or eight calls in, I go back to their top five goals, whether it's to resolve this or improve that, right? I find in every case about 75 to 90%, 95% improvement in those top five things in six or eight weeks. It's not that everything's fixed, but those bothers and symptoms have gone, right? Um, you're going to need to start rewiring your old patterns because if you're used to existing a certain way, yes, we can release trauma and help you to facilitate that, but there's also some new pathways to form. So if you're used to burnout, well, I don't just say, well, stop burning out. Oh, okay, thank you. Right. <laughs> so it's like, okay, thanks. Or you say you've gotten, so you're drinking too much. Oh, you stop drinking. Thank you. Right. It's, it's like, okay, well, we need to create some new pathways. So if you're used to talking shit to yourself all the time, you're not going to go, I love myself. Because your brain's going, no, you don't. <laughs> Liar. Right. So it's going to be, I choose protect my well-being i choose to take care of myself right so there's going to be some steps and maybe it's just a matter of eating breakfast maybe it's taking a walk maybe you decide to start working out this is later in your life in your stages when you're not in survival mode or being victimized okay there's context to this um bit by bit so you're going to have to repeat, repeat, repeat. So your path is this way, we're going to go this way. But we're going to have to, it's a well-worn path where it's just like psh, default. And it's okay if you collapse into your old ways many times, but then just start rebuilding that new path. So if, if I'm a person who honors my energy, what does that mean? Well, I might say no to some requests, right? So that I can say yes to me. If I'm a person who's drained by people who treat me like an emotional dumpster, um, I'm going to distance myself from being available for that. And so if your default was to be able, you know, it's, it's going to take some repetition and gentle repetition. So you don't have to force yourself to do a complete 180 nervous system. It's like, oh my gosh, what is she doing to me? <laughs> Little stages and repeat, 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 right? You're forming a new way of existing. Am I painting a good picture here? Yes. Yes. Okay. We have about three minutes left and just okay. to honor people's time, but, okay. um, you know, people can, we can stay a bit over as well. I just okay. wanted to acknowledge where you say, you know, when we list what we need to either, what we're resentful about, what we need to let go that we then give ourselves permission to really, truly start practicing if, if it's in our mind or whatever it is to let go give mm -hmm. ourselves that permission to yeah. consider like you know what every time that comes up okay this is something i need to let go if, if it will take us a little bit of time to start you know forging that new path yeah so i have some other steps in your worksheet i did put one that's um if you're not in survival mode anymore okay um I mentioned this with complete bias as a fitness trainer is if you're not already training your body for strength, go do that, right? You will show up differently when you strengthen your body. It's a complete shift as far as one of the outward things you can do um, along with releasing trauma. Those two things, game changer. Um, 
I have on your worksheet a couple of different options if you're wanting to explore how do I move forward with this because recognizing that you will be in different points in your journey. So I have um, one that's an exclusive empowerment coaching call for this community at an exclusive price for a limited time. So I can sit with you one-on-one -on -one and help you to um, unpack this a little bit. And that's I've got amazing. the details in the worksheet. The others will be like a free call or a wait list for um, a program that I've been offering to help women with their physical, emotional, and mental self-care. A couple of different ways to work with me because you're not all in the same place. And I want to help you find your best path. If it's not with me, I'll help you brainstorm about what might make sense for you. That's amazing, Ramona. Because like you say, everybody's in a different spot. And yeah. it it's really helpful too, if they have the worksheet that they can have already started and the other gentle um, trauma release assessment mm -hmm. and, and have some understanding, even if you've read it and then each day that goes by, something else might come to mind and you start recognizing where there might yeah. be trauma or where, where there could be some things that have you stuck so that then yeah. when they talk to you one-on-one, -on -one, they're, they're already, they have something to talk about because it's like, I don't know what I don't know. I don't know. Is there trauma? Like, where am I stuck? And at least this way they have a start and mm -hmm. a, a place to, to work from with you. I think that's really cool that you've supplied those. Yeah. So this, I've, you know, just been honored to sit here with you, um, talk about some of the stages of healing and empowerment and give you some ideas of what you can look at and think about or do differently. Okay. Above all, be gentle with yourself and have self-compassion all along the way. No criticism or bashing of yourself and no forcing and pushing. Um, and, you know, if something that I do speaks to you, let I invite you to chat. I don't push because if anyone's going to work with me, they're excited to work with me and that's it, right? So yeah. um, I have had people who've been working on it um, for months or years with the gentle trauma release approach tell me, you help me more in three weeks than nine months or more in three months than six, than two years. Right. Um, so whenever I'm, if I'm going to work with women, I want to be sure that you can get um, tangible results. Yeah. That's the goal, right? Yeah. We want to move the needle forward and have tangible shifts in how you feel and how you're showing up in your life. Well, and so, even beyond the healing, there's empowerment in this as well yeah it's a big part of it so it kind of interweaves so yeah. it usually will start out with some therapeutic work and weave into the empowerment coaching because you're rebuilding right you're rebuilding and establishing this new version of you that's more authentic i hope you found that conversation insightful encouraging and also a reminder to all of us that what we see isn't always as it appears. People are going through a lot of things in their lives and we would want that compassion shared to us and that is something that we can offer to others without judgment. Instead, be curious and, and reach out, reach in, figure out a way that you can make someone's day a little better and it might just start with a smile. I thank you very much for spending your time with me here today and I encourage you to please subscribe to the podcast follow us on social media, check out our events. We have lots of ways that we can help you or someone that you love. Share this with a friend. If there's someone that you know could benefit from this and hey, keep smiling that beautiful smile because the world really does need your sunshine. It means a lot that you spend this time with us and meet our experts and professionals who can help you through whatever life changes you're facing. Please refer to our terms of service available on our website, lifechangesmag.com. The link is in the show notes. Our disclaimer, Divorce Magazine Canada, Life Changes Magazine and Channel and Divorce Resource Groups are intended to educate and provide quality, credible resource information. The contents should not be used as factual until consultation with the appropriate professionals for any guidance. Divorce Magazine Canada, Life Changes Magazine, and Life Changes Channel, as well as the Divorce Resource Groups, do not constitute endorsements for nor liability for any claims made in the presenting of this information.